Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A few months ago I took a metalworking class and as a result from that I was invited to show my wood turnings at a gear show. Now the show itself was full of little machines doing antique reproduction machines and uh, fantastic metalworking. I was the only wood turner in that show. It was quite, quite fun actually. But there was a fellow by the name of Mike Reddy that came by. He's an excellent machinist and sheet metal person. And after looking at my uh, completed projects, he offered me a cherry stump, one that he had intended to use for sheet metal work, but had decided not to. So the stump is very, very dry and heavy. But from this, I want to make a little cherry goblet in thanks to Mike. Let's make this goblet. The first order of business is to cut a block of wood out of the stump. I'm using a Makita Electric Professional Chainsaw. I like it because I can always get it started, in contrast with my gas chainsaw. It has a long enough bar to handle many medium and smaller rough cut jobs. The stump has large splits despite being painted many years ago. I plan to cut down through the end of one of the bigger splits then down through the pith. This is a rip cut and slower going than a cross grain cut. Plus, I probably need to sharpen the chain. After having the stump, just a little more freed the chunk of wood. With the wood now mounted between centers, I roughed it out, experimenting with a variety of tools to see which worked best with this piece of cherry. Finally, I settled on my favorite gouge. Then. Cut a tenon on each end with a skew. Finally, I parted it nearly through with a parting tool and cut the remainder on a bandsaw. It's not a good idea to part completely through between centers. Now it's my chance to use my golden mean calipers. I bought these at the Utah Symposium last year. I don't recall from whom. I put one end on the top of the block, the other end where I expected the bottom to be. The middle pointer then indicates the golden mean position, which will be the bottom of the goblet cup. Then I rough cut the exterior of the cut, leaving plenty of wood at the base for now. I started hollowing the cup's interior without removing the tailstock. This was not comfortable, so I stopped and used my tailstock cart to remove the tailstock. The tailstock is so heavy, I don't like to lift it. Now with good access to the interior, hollowing goes much easier with a gouge, followed by a round nose scraper. Then on to sand and finish the interior. I'm using shellac friction polish. With the interior completed, I can start working down the exterior. My goblet is not tall enough to require a steady rest. First, I'll refine the exterior of the cup with my skew. Then sand and finish the cup portion. Mm -hmm. 
the middle portion is much like a finial. I'm too far away from the tool rest for me to be comfortable with a skew, so I'll use a gouge. I almost cut a sharp fin in the middle of the spindle, then I smoothed it out thinking it would be uncomfortable to hold with your fingers. I can use my skew for the base. Then, you guessed it, I sanded and finished the rest of the goblet. Finally, I parted off the completed goblet. I sanded the underside with a 2 inch disc mounted in the drill press. A little more finish completed the goblet. I have not finished a goblet for some time. It's a fun project. I'll send it off to Mike Reddy in appreciation for the wood. I hope he likes it. Meanwhile, I hope that Mike Walt, the goblet master, approves of my goblet. Cherry is a beautiful wood and very nice to work with. That's all for this week. Please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Please always wear your full face shield, not just goggles. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.